Joining me today on Classical Conversations, we have the New York-based composer and clarinetist Derek Vermel. Derek, thank you so much for joining me. Uh, it's my pleasure. So we're going to be talking about your new album, which is on the Naxos label, called Migrations, um, obviously inspired by the title track, Migration Series for Jazz Ensemble and Orchestra. Uh, can you tell me a little bit about this piece of music? I'm aware that it was commissioned by uh, another kind of jazz icon, Wynton Marsalis, but also it was inspired by a set of paintings. Yeah, it was inspired by a set of paintings that I saw when I was a little kid with my mom. Uh, that's Jacob Lawrence's Migration series. And uh, it's a set of 60 paintings that this great American painter, Harlem Renaissance painter, um, painted in 1940 to 41. And it depicts the migration of African Americans from the South to the North along the railroad lines for the most part. Uh, to cities in the north. And uh, this is a great, great American work that is, um, you know, is not maybe as well known as it should be, uh, partly because it was commissioned by two different museums who each own half of the work. But I was just struck by the beauty of the work, the, the shapes, the colors, and it just evoked musical sounds for me. So when I had this commission from Wynton Marsalis from the uh, Jazz at Lincoln Center Orchestra, um, from their their jazz band plus the American Composers Orchestra, I immediately thought of the Migration series because uh, it was just such an epic story and epic work, and I wanted to pay tribute to this great work. Mm, so you had kind of been sitting on this idea for a while then? Had you been itching to, to get a chance to, to kind of create this piece of music for a while? Well, you know, it's funny how composition works because it's not linear usually, at least for me and for most of the composers that I know. I started hearing sounds and writing down tunes, chords, just just any kinds of sounds. And uh, and as I was working, and as I started composing the piece, I thought, this is like a mosaic. It's coming together. The, the tunes come back in different movements, but they're transformed. There are these rhythms. There are jagged edges. Uh, but this mosaic form started to just remind me of the migration series. And after I had completed about two or three of the five movements, I thought, you know, this is this is my tribute to the Migration series, and I didn't even know that I was writing it, but now I know once I was in the middle of it. So then I was, I had some renewed confidence as I, as I kept writing and, and thought this, this would be a great work to be a tribute to Jacob Lawrence Migration series. And then coincidentally, when I was talking with Wynton Marcellus, he told me that he had met Jacob Lawrence and his wife, who was also a great painter. And um, and so it, there's just this really nice confluence of coincidences that uh, that that felt like it was energizing the premiere of this piece, which we did at Lincoln Center. You mentioned uh, being confident in your tribute to uh, to Jacob Lawrence, and I was wondering if there was any maybe sense of nervousness in capturing a story as these paintings are depicting a migration of African Americans from the South to the North. Um, any nervousness in depicting a story that maybe for you personally was not a part of your own past and and your own story? Well, sure, in a way, um, you know, I, I think what's incredible about this piece is that it actually um, is that Lawrence's piece um, he, it's he's able to let the listener uh, let I call it the listener the viewer <laughs> into his paintings um, because in a way it's done in a very objective kind of depiction of events and so it allows any viewer to come to that with their own personal experience and the experience of their own family. Um, and so for me, I came to it with the experience of having a father who is an immigrant to this country and having had, like many Americans, relatives who were immigrants uh, just in recent generations. In fact, all my family, you know, a few generations ago, my mm. family wasn't here. 
Um, and around the time of the migration is when my many members of my family came to America. So I think that that kind of parallelism that so many people can bring to this work makes it a universal work and makes it a work that almost anybody can find their way into. Uh, of course, I would I would never have set out to write a piece about the migration itself because I think that might have been a little too close. But this allowed me to be uh, a step removed to and to pay tribute to somebody who I consider to be one of our great artists um, of any background. I, I think Lawrence's work can inform so many different experiences, and that's what makes it so rich. You mentioned paying tribute. I, I wondered as well, there's so many great pieces of, of music that, that kind of blend the gap between classical music and jazz. I mean, obviously the big one, Rhapsody in Blue, George Gershwin, but also William Grant Still's Afro-American Symphony. Were those kind of guiding lights for you, or is it something that maybe you put aside and, and, and thought of creating your own sound, your own your own vision? Yeah. Uh, well, you know, it's interesting you mentioned those two works. Um, probably Gershwin's even more than the still, and and also even more than that, maybe uh, the works, the great works of Duke Ellington, mm -hmm. uh, like mm -hmm. Harlem, um, like uh, Blackburn and Beige, uh, like um, Far East Suite, and even the Nutcracker Suite. Right, because right. to me, Ellington was one of those composers who who was never put off by embracing all different traditions, didn't matter what tradition they were coming from. Uh, Ellington would, and, and he found a way to infuse the jazz band into all these traditions and to create a whole new vocabulary for this set of instruments, which had not existed up until that point. So um, so I would I would probably say that Ellington more than still, although still is certainly one of the great kind of pioneers of the American orchestral sound and, and certainly had an influence on many, many American composers after him. Well, you know, I love the Migration series, but also on this album you have, you know, Mar del Septembro, and you mentioned that Migration, uh, the series, was inspired by paintings, but uh, Mar del Septembro was inspired by poetry. Can you tell us a little bit about, about that process, writing that piece of music? Yes, I was I was reading the poetry of the great Portuguese poet Eugenio de Andrade, and uh, I was just struck by how evocative it was and how it made me think of musical sounds and how, well, of course, many Portuguese poets have set Andrade's work into fados, um, and fado is is you know this gorgeous and very mournful. Uh, very passionate kind of music that that um, for many people might might evoke something of the flamenco tradition as well from similar area in southern Spain, but fado is uniquely Portuguese, and uh, and I was just taken away by the um, the rapturous quality of this poetry, and so I set about trying to uh, trying to get the rights for this this poetry and then it gave me an opportunity to work with one of my favorite singers uh, Luciana Souza who herself is also a wonderful composer as well and so it sparked a beautiful collaboration we had worked together once before when I wrote a piece for the Los Angeles Philharmonic and I and I set one movement of song that I wrote uh, for Luciana and then this gave us a chance to work together in a slightly more um, robust context. And then the last track as well, I, I've kind of noticed a, a theme here because the last one um, is a shout, a whisper, and a trace, which is a, which is a, a tribute to Bela Bartok's last years in New York. And it seems like you have very specific ideas that kind of inspire y the music that you're writing. I is that the process for, for you on, on every piece? You have to have kind of this very specific idea of a tribute or an image that helps kind of inspire the work. That's a good question. You know, I, but I think, I, I mean, as I was saying before, the that the process of writing music is, and, and I think this goes for the process of writing a book or, or the process of making a painting, it's, 
it, it's a little bit of this and a little bit of that. And then you stand back and look at it and something occurs to you that you never would have thought of or in the middle of the night, suddenly you think of something. And so sometimes I'm writing music and during the process of writing, I think, oh, Bartok, you know, or, 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 or it suddenly it reminds me of something. Or in this case, you know, uh, these particular works had to do with these works of mine have to do with other artworks that I was happened upon at the same time. So I was reading Bella Bartok's letters at the time I was I began writing this piece. And so they cast a shadow or they let's say they illuminated in a nicer way. They illuminated the course of this work. And and so, you know, I think sometimes what we're doing in life and the things that are happening in our lives are very bound up with the works that we write. Whether we want to or not, it's hard to escape what's actually happening in our lives. And sometimes that what happens with those works is not always very straightforward. It's sometimes oblique. It comes comes at the work from strange angles or unexpected angles. Well, Derek, again, thank you so much for joining us uh, here on Classical Conversations and uh, really excited about your album Migrations and, uh, yeah, excited for our future projects as well. Thank you so much. <laughs>